Hi, this is Future Ian. Um, during production of this show, we learned of the untimely passing of Grant Imahara. Um, uh, his time on Mythbusters was definitely a formative part of me doing what I do today. Um, and uh, yeah, he also worked with uh, people at Mauser, who are our parent company, on the um, Empowering uh, Innovation series. Um, I just want to pass on my deepest condolences to anyone who knew or was connected to Grant. He died too young, was a fantastic mind um, and was living proof that you can be both incredibly knowledgeable and an engineer and also a fantastic television celebrity. Um, I didn't think this would fit anywhere in our normal show, which is why I'm putting it straight up front like this and so we can just sort of have a normal show after. Um, and I'm recording this very late in the production cycle anyway. Um, so uh, uh, apologies. As you're about to hear in my introduction, I'm sick again. Um, and also, since we heard this news halfway through the show, yes, to some people he was just a celebrity. Uh, to me, he was actually somewhat inspiring. So if my mood switches at some point in this show and it is visible, apologies. Um, I, I, it's just how it is. Greetings folks and welcome back to the Electromaker Show. Now this week, unfortunately, I am sick again. Yes, that's apparently one of the benefits of having young children. But nevertheless, we have a packed show, including the winners of the giant board competition that has been happening on the Electromaker website, some fantastic funding projects on crowd supply, of course, the mystery box competition, and some fantastic projects we've seen through the week. So let's get going. So up first today we're going to talk about the giant board contest that's been happening on the Electromaker website. Now I did mention this in a show a few weeks back, uh, but this is a board based on the giant board which is a very tiny Linux computer in the Adafruit Feather form factor. Just before we go through the submissions, the giant board from Growboards, if you're not familiar, is a Linux computer on an Adafruit Feather form factor sized board. Uh, so this essentially is in the same region as something like a Raspberry Pi or a uh, kind of BeagleBone board. Um, but yeah, again, in the Adafruit form factor, which means that it can use all of the Adafruit Feather shields. Um, and it has a, a number of other nice things, like you can attach a LiPo battery directly to it and all of these kind of uh, things. Another thing that is quite nice about it is that since MicroPython is now available for Linux boards, uh, it's, this is the perfect board for it. And it's something that they do feature along with a completely open source way of working with it. And this, of course, makes it perfect for the competition. And in third place, winning $250 is a project from Isaac Doyle Koch. This is a smart thermostat which uses temperature readings in order to control a wood-fired boiler and a window-mounted air conditioning unit. Now, projects using sensors and relays along with microcontrollers or single-board computers and software like Node-RED or Blink are nothing particularly new. There are a lot of them out there, but the fact that this is a wood-fired boiler adds an extra level of challenge. The level of detail gone into in this write-up is fantastic. It doesn't just go through how he did it, it also talks about the theory that he had to put together in order to make it all work and fit together for his particular circumstance. The project also shows the way that it was all logged using Blink. And if you've never used Blink before, I'd suggest checking it out. It's free to get started with and it's a great way to have a control board for all of your DIY Internet of Things devices. That's quite easy to set up. The combination of the complexity the specific setup required here brought to this project with the fantastic documentation makes this a fantastic read and yeah, this is a well-deserved third place in this competition. Congratulations. Just a quick note at this stage, because I didn't mention it before, um, this competition started long before I was uh, with Electromaker, so I didn't have anything to do with the judging of the competition. I'm just looking through the winning entries because they're really cool. Winning the $500 prize for second place is Tecoops. That's right, the Coops has put together a proof of concept project for monitoring your neighborhood's power usage from the sky using a drone. Now this is just a proof of concept, but it goes into such an incredible amount of detail as to how something like this will be possible, proves that it will be possible, and the only thing stopping it from actually going up in the air on a drone so far is the addition of the LiPo battery that they didn't have to hand while making the project. The backbone of this project uses a software-defined radio in order to gather data from different electric meters. Now, I didn't realize this, but your electric meter sends out an RF signal, which is one of the ways that the power company can track the power usage that you have without actually physically coming to your house. And the idea here was to use a small single-board computer, in this case, obviously, the giant board, to log all of that information using the software-defined radio. Now, uh, this will need to be quite high up in the sky in order to uh, function as a sort of antennae. 
Um, but as you can see from here, uh, they are receiving data from different machines. And when I say machines, I mean electric meters. Now, they've redacted the ID numbers of the electric meters that they could actually uh, sense data from uh, for obvious privacy reasons, but you can see that they collected a whole bunch of data. There is an extensive write-up of the theory behind this build and, of course, the build process with all of the code required to do something like it yourself. Uh, this was a very deserved second place. This is an incredibly complex project done well, and we look forward to seeing the thing actually fly. And in first place is Dylan1337, winning the $1,250 prize with a thermal imaging camera MIDI sequencer. In a fully fleshed out project, Dylan has used the giant board along with several Adafruit feather shields to create a thermal imaging camera which takes thermal information and turns it into musical notes before playing them. This is my project, which is a MIDI sequencer using a thermal camera. A stove with two burners on. Now, not only is this just a wonderful idea put into a project which has been realized well, it wasn't as simple as it seemed. This wasn't just chucking a few shields together and using some pre-existing software to make it all work. For example, on the Adafruit Music Maker shield that he used, um, he didn't connect all of the pins, knowing that he wouldn't need them all, and didn't want them to interfere with the other ones, and created a separate reset for it so that you could reset it from software without it affecting all of the other boards. As you can see here, everything fits within the enclosure except from the power bank, giving you multiple options for powering it. And this is just a very well-made, self-contained project, well deserving of winning the prize. So congratulations, Dylan. And uh, this has been fantastic for me as someone who is new to these Electromaker contests. Um, I'm really looking forward to the ones going forward. As I mentioned before, we do have a Google AIY contest, which is ongoing currently, which you can still enter. Um, and yeah, this is fantastic. Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you so much for everyone that took part as well, because this has been a great learning experience for a lot of people. And I really look forward to seeing what everyone comes up with in future competitions. And now onto a section called cool new things on funding websites, except not all of them are new. Hmm. While it is by no means a new story, uh, the Micro Arduino is now back in stock. Um, a couple of years ago when this first thing came out, it made a bit of a splash. It is essentially a Arduino which is, which is literally the smallest Arduino that you can get. Um, it's 12 by 12 millimeters and it has the same chip as the Arduino Micro and Leonardo. Now, looking at this thing, you might wonder what the practical uses of it are. I mean, just by the way that it's set out, you won't be using this on a breadboard. But um, there are actually some good reasons that you might want to use it. I mean, the obvious and first one is that for wearables, this is fantastic. This is smaller than even those little Adafruit discs that you can sew into things. It is absolutely tiny. And as it is USB, it means you can use any USB power supply to power it without having to worry about any extra wiring. In my case, uh, the thing that I like this most for is that it's so small that it allows you to create USB HID devices which are modular. My example would be, um, I have this uh, little rotary encoder here that I have been using to breadboard creating a editing tool because I spend a lot of time editing video for this show and other things. Um, and so the only actual USB HID compliant device I have right now is the Teensy 4. And the Teensy 4 is Teensy. It is a very, very small board, but even this, if you look, is ever so slightly larger than the body of the little handle of the rotary encoder that I want to use. Now, of course, I could just use a bigger handle, but I don't want to do that. What this means is that this little rotary encoder board, which could lose a little bit of weight, it could be trimmed around the side here and here, and so that it would all fit inside the body of the switch here. One of these little boards could fit exactly on the bottom of it, and the entire thing could be one enclosed unit, meaning that instead of having to design one board with the rotary encoder and buttons for editing, and then different controllers for different things, I can just build a modular setup with lots of tiny little boards in and a USB hub to control them all together. So uh, yeah, I, I, needless to say, I have one of these on order. Um, and when it comes through, I will be showing it on the show and I will show you um, what I get up to with it, maybe with some kind of behind the scenes of Electromaker Show thing that we'll get to in due course. Needless to say, the Micro Duino is a cool project, but unless you need it, you probably won't be getting a hold of one. Uh, $24 for one is a lot more than the cost of a normal Arduino Micro, and I get that. It's for people that really want to get something absolutely tiny, um, and that is absolutely me. Um, there'll be a link to this one in the description, and uh, this is, a, uh, from what I understand, a quite small team that put this together just so that they could see that they could do it. So uh, this is the one that I would say is definitely worth your support, and uh, I don't know how much longer they'll be back in stock, um, but yes, 
Link in the description, as always. Up next, a board from Peakonomics called the PX Hero. Now this is an ARM uh, Cortex chip with, uh, well, it's an STM32, sorry, um, the low uh, powered version, the STM32L0 something, 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 uh, with a backlit LED and various peripherals. Um, now this, this is another ARM STM32 board. You're probably familiar with the blue pill. These are just a couple of dollars um, and you can use them with the Arduino IDE, which makes them great. Um, this board takes this idea of making the STM32 family of chips accessible to an entire new level, which is why I think it is probably worth your attention. So as you can see here, there are various options for going through the documentation, everything through the manual uh, to the board to a getting started guide. And the getting started guide is a lot better than the getting started guide for most official documentation of de development boards that are out there, especially when you're talking about the STM32 family of chips. Now, I want to make it very clear, I'm not trying to knock the documentation for other boards, but when you factor in the fact that uh, if you leave aside the Arduino ID compatibility of the STM32, um, I'm currently working through uh, this book for how to use a uh, free RTOS for the STM32, which is a, you know, a, a fair chunk. And just for the one STM32 chip in the Nucleus board is this one book, which is a fantastic book. It is a reference, it is a resource, but this this is just for one iteration of the STM32 chips. It's no wonder that certain elements of uh, embedded engineering seem so impossible to get into without a university education in the subject. Which is why I find boards like these so nice. This has obviously been put together with education in mind and so that anyone, no matter their level, can actually get down to using it and to making things with it fairly easily. There's also a command line explorer app that you can use uh, just through a com port, um, is, which is, you know, if you're used to SSHing into a Pi, that's going to be something that's sort of familiar to you. And there is also Arduino IDE support for the board. There's more things I could go over about this board, but I just wanted to point it out because anything that tries to make ARM Cortex boards a little bit more accessible to people it pleases me because I'm still trying to get my head around the basics of it myself. Um, so yes, uh, I'll leave a link to this one in the description. This one has met its funding targets, but it is in stock and you can order them now. And now a crowd supply project which covers something I've talked about in the past. Uh, power is always a faff. If you're using USB power banks for anything that uses very low voltages, say uh, microcontrollers, especially internet of things, things that need to sleep quite a lot, you know how annoying it can be because power banks have auto shut off features. Now this is a good thing, it's to protect the power bank, but you don't always want them to be in use. And that is what this thing is for. Uh, power Forever is designed to be a constant load on a power supply, designed to be as low as possible to keep the power supply running, but to mean that it never actually fully cuts out and just leaves your project dead in the water wherever you've left it. One thing I thought that was quite nice about this is that they also have a little breakout pin connector for it, um, which basically just turns your USB port into five breakoutable uh, screw terminals meaning that you can very easily get up and running with USB power without having to split a USB cable. Uh, because if you're anything like me, you have a drawer full of half broken and cut apart USB cables just waiting to be used in a project. And yeah, this neatly cuts that out. You can still back this project on Crowd Supply if you wish. There will be a link to it in the description. And at $19 for the Power Forever and $5 for the extra breakout board, um, there are definitely cheaper options for putting a current drain on your battery banks. But the point is, do you want to set that up yourself? That's the thing here. For $24 to never have to worry about splicing USB cables or worrying about auto shut off in your battery packs again, I think that's a fair price to pay. And as always, because I have a problem and I have to own everything, I'll be back in this project and I'll let you know how they go. And it is time for the mystery box competition. I said the mystery box competition. That's more like it, eh? Now, as I have said so many times, this is a box of mystery. There are mystery things in it. Some of them might be very useful. Some of them might be microcontrollers. Some of them might be sensors. Some of them might be microcontrollers that are no longer supported or sensors that no longer fit onto microcontrollers that you can buy. Some of it might not even be tech. I don't know. I haven't even got to the bottom of this box yet. That's why it's a mystery box competition. It might be a good prize. It might be a bad prize. So a bit of a rummage for good measure. And then, oh, that's a large, that's a big, it's a big box week, folks. It's a big box week. It is a Grove Starter Kit Plus. Ooh, it's a Grove Starter Kit Plus. Now, for those of you that weren't familiar, uh, Seed Studios put out a variety of boards which use their Grove Connection Kit. Uh, now, you know what I said about maybe giving you something which was a bunch of stuff for a microcontroller you may not own? This might be the first week that that happens. I'm just gonna look into this a bit closer. 
oh man, okay, I was wrong. This is not that thing at all. This is fantastic, actually. Um, so just very quickly, I want to tell you what's in this box. There is the Grove buzzer, Grove button, Grove green, blue, and red LEDs, a sound sensor, a three-axis digital accelerometer, a touch sensor, a light sensor, a temperature sensor, an LCD RGB backlight, a rotary angle sensor, and a piezo vibration sensor, along with the power adapter, uh, a gear stepper motor with a driver, a USB cable, and uh, uh, another cable. Now, um, like I said, this is all useless, surely, if you don't own anything from Seed Studios already. Aha, this is where it gets cool. The cool part is this. This base shield is Arduino Uno compatible and attaches all of the aforementioned sensors to an Arduino. And I've just checked there are Arduino libraries for these very sensors that you can use as well. So uh, yeah, this is actually a fairly robust little uh, thing. Anyone that has an Arduino Uno or clone can use this kit. So now that we have the prize, we need to choose the winner. And the winner of the mystery box competition this week is Not Enough Tech. And I'm very glad to see you've won the competition as you've been present with this show from the start and you've been a part of the YouTube uh, channel comments for the entire time and I thank you for that. Um, and that goes to anyone else out there who is commenting on our videos. That is how you enter this competition. Any comment that is on our channel will uh, allow you to enter the competition and as somebody pointed out it doesn't do a bad thing for us in terms of visibility on YouTube either. But anyway uh, that is it for this week's Mystery Box competition. Please comment on this video if you'd like to enter for the next week's but for now let's get on with the show. Now let's look at what cool projects and stuff have been on the internet this week. Wait, what? What? I have a number of questions. Why is... Why? why would be the first. Where would be the second? That looks like it's out the... That looks like a, a, a terrace of houses. I have so many questions. This gift was just sent to me without a source, so I don't have one. Um, if you know anything about it, let me know. This is... Ah! Anyway, let's have a quick look at what's happening on the Raspberry Pi subreddit. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm looking at this on Google Image Search rather than the actual subreddit itself... Oh, come on, mods. This was a picture of Raspberry Pis with raccoons. It's cool, it's allowed. Surely these rules can be more like guidelines. All right, onto an actual project. And this is the automatic biscuit dipper from the Mystic Chicken on YouTube. This is, uh, yeah, as, as it looks like, you know, just a few servos stuck to a few bits of wood in order to, uh, to you know, get, a, get, get your biscuit dunked in your tea. It's exactly what you want, but no, no, it's way more complicated than that. This video goes into a lot of detail with the overly convoluted methods, including using a Raspberry Pi camera, downloading average bi biscuit colors from the internet, and using those to create uh, a, a palette in which the camera can detect when a biscuit is in the right place to dunk it into the tea. And if that sounds complicated, it is. This video is fantastically edited. This project is hilarious. And at this moment in time, the Mystic Chicken has only 84 subscribers. So let's see if we can add a few to that number. But this is a amazing project. I love it. There'll be a link to it in the description. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. And now onto a project by Electromaker user Mukesh Sankler. His project uses the WS2811 addressable LEDs along with 3D printed parts and a node MCU to make a hex clock. Now there are many different kinds of projects that appear that use these kind of addressable LEDs. Some of them are very clever in the way that they use sensor data to make everything work and some of them are just beautiful and really well put together and this falls into the latter category. Now this isn't to say that there wasn't a lot of technical skill involved in putting this project together. It is a very polished looking thing and uh, with all of the parts 3D printed it's something that you could make yourself and it would also look as polished as the one that he has put up here. Alongside the 3D printing files there are instructions as to how to make the 3D print work along with the way to put the circuit together and to wire up all the LEDs for easy programming and of course the code is available with the project as well. One nice touch with this project is that there's the option of using an Arduino Uno as well as a Node MCU, depending on which one you have. Instructions are supplied for both. Uh, this is a really nice write-up, a fantastic tutorial, and there will be a link to it in the description of this video. And finally today, a very nice solar-powered proof-of-concept project from Lore Laure Laurentius? Laurentius, we're going to go with that. Apologies if I'm absolutely buttering that. Um, this blog is now running on solar power is the title of the blog on the website which is now running on solar power and you can see that it is because there is a solar status monitor in the top right and this blog post which is way too long for me to go into every detail of um, shows the attempt that has been made to move the hosting of this particular blog onto a Raspberry Pi which is being powered from a battery which is being charged via solar energy. 
Now, the reason that this is a proof of concept is because there are certain elements of this build, like the modem um, and a few other parts that are still being powered from the mains. And um, when the battery goes dead, it will be uh, rerouted to a VPS that they are already paying for. Um, this is very much a proof of concept, but it's a very cool one. And it goes into the technical details of how this works and how they are achieving it. Um, and there's, you know, a lot of nice little touches here. If you are interested in solar powering a Pi at all, this is a great uh, place to look. Um, so I will leave a link to this, uh, this blog post in the description. I uh, su suggest checking it out. And if you are someone that is a bit more knowledgeable in this field than I am, I'm very much a noob when it comes to solar power, um, and you know something that might be able to help them out, get in contact with them. At the end of their post, they have actually reached out for ideas and said, look, if anyone knows how I can make this more efficient, get in touch. Um, and you can see just briefly here how they are doing with their solar power with the histogram. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this project really appeals to me. I would love to get into doing more solar powered stuff one day. Um, it's something that I do neither have the time nor the space for at the moment. But uh, if you are someone that is into solar power or even if you're just interested in a cool project, which is a nice idea, there'll be a link to it in the description of this video. Thank you so much, folks, for joining us for this week's Electromaker show. That is it for this week. We'll be back next week with all new updates from the Maker world. Um, and as I said before, if you want to be a part of the Mystery Box competition, just leave a comment on this video. Everyone will be entered. So I hope you have a safe, productive, and creative week. Take care, and I'll see you then.